Hello, my name is Rob Garner. I'm a computer programming instructor, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to catch multiple exceptions. So, um, last time we uh, we demonstrated how to catch an exception, and so what we did is we did a while true, and we have um, a do another loop going in here, and we have some operation um, that may cause an exception, and then um, and then if we cause a, get an exception, we print an error. Now this worked okay. In fact, we're gonna run this again. And I'll put in some value, nine and zero. And, but the problem is we don't really know why, the user doesn't really know what the problem was based on this. Well, maybe what we could do is we could um, let me copy this. I'm going to um, copy this program and paste it so that we can work on the copy. And I'm going to rename this to catch multiple exceptions demo. And maybe what we would say, well, you know, we know that dividing by zero would cause an error. So why don't we just say, hey, error, um, you are trying to divide by zero. And we'll run that. So I'll put nine and I'll put zero. Oh, good. Um, I misspelled it, but you know, essentially it's... Um, Um, it's working. So, great. Close up this up. But let me run that again. What if instead of doing that, though, I just put some letters here and hit enter? It's telling me I'm trying to divide by zero, but clearly that's not the issue here, right? The issue was I didn't put a number in. So, Okay, so we can't treat it that way. If we want to tell the user what they're doing wrong, uh, we need to be a little bit more precise. Well, it turns out that um, uh, I can actually catch specific types of exceptions. And just to kind of temporarily demonstrate this, I'm going to comment out my 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 try block here uh, so that I can drive the exception without um, without absorbing it so I can see something so I'm going to run this again so now I'm running this code we're not catching the exception I'm going to put nine and zero and now because I don't have the try catch try accept block in it's showing me that I'm getting a zero division error so this zero division error, I'm going to copy that. And I'm just going to put a comment in here just to hold on to that. And now I'm going to put back my try block. So I'm going to put that back in. I'm going to tab this in so it's part of the try block. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to put that error right here. So now I'm not just catching any exception, I'm only catching zero division error exceptions. Let me run that. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna do another one and I'm going to put some letters in here and see what happens. Great, it didn't give me a zero division error message, but it gave me a value error. Well, I'd like to let, uh, let, I'd like to catch that one too. How can I do that? Well, what you can do is you can have multiple exception blocks. So you can do this. So I'm going to also catch the value error. Let me make sure these all stay lined up.
So now what I'm saying is um, if I get a value error, it's because you didn't enter a number. So the value error happens when you try to convert something that's not a number into a float. And so now if they put in a zero, we'll tell them that, hey, you're trying to divide by zero. And then if they put in something that's not a number, it'll tell them you did not enter a number. And we will run this again. And so if I do a divide by zero, it tells me that. I can do another one. If I put in um, something that's not a number, it says you did not enter a number, and I can try again. And then if I say uh, put a, a number and put something valid in, it'll actually do the math, and it'll work. So notice that now we don't get an exception. Now, one other thing we do is at the very end, we will often put in an accept exception I usually like to actually use EXE. So now what will happens is this is a catch-all. And what will happen is if we get a zero division error, it's going to print this method. If we get a value error, we'll get this message. Any other exception, this exception will catch everything. We'll, do, we'll display that exception, and that will have a message which will uh, handle everything. And, um, and now... So let's run this. And again, nine and zero, we get the divide by zero, uh, uh, some letters. And then let's see if I can make an overflow error happen. Um, I'm not sure, usually it's really hard to do this. Nope, it took it. <laughs> I want things. And, that's nice and annoying about Python. It just kind of works. But um, if there's any th error that we didn't anticipate, this exception will handle it. In fact, you could actually just do this. So I'm going to comment out the zero division of value error, and we'll see that this will actually catch everything. I'm going to run it again. So if I put nine and zero, it works. It will, this will catch the zero division, and it says float division by zero. And I can then run it again, and let's see if it catches the name error. Error, could not convert string to float. Now, why would we want these instead of just, why won't we just do the generic exception and catch everything? Well, if I was writing this for a bunch of programmers, this would probably be fine. But if it's a typical user, does the typical user know what a string is or what a float is? Not really. So for that reason, often we want to catch the exceptions we can anticipate and give the user a much more constructive answer in the context of our code. And then at the very end, we put this in as a catch-all. And that's generally how we will catch our exceptions in order to make this a better user experience for the for the users. So how do we do this? Write your code. Run your code and see what exceptions uh, you can get to happen. Note what those exceptions are and then add a try block, an accept block for each of those exceptions, and then add this final exception as exe and print it out here uh, to display to, as just as a just in case emergency catch-all for every, anything that might not have been caught. And if you're doing this in the context of a do another, you're going notice that you're going to put your try block inside the while. If you put it outside of the while, what will happen is it'll actually break out of your code and it won't allow you to continue around. So you want your try block inside of this while, you know, your, your repetition loop. And, you know, if you write this code, 
correctly, you're not likely to get an exception in this area. So that is basically how you write multiple exceptions. Thank you very much.